is the Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Season 6, Episode 8 of the Chris Abraham Show, I believe. Let me make sure, just in case. And uh, I'm uh, going to be making this kind of patchy over the course, yeah, Season 8. I mean, Season 6, Episode 8. I don't know what this episode is going to be about. Um, maybe this episode will be about... Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and my current progress with regards to paying tweetdeleter.com money to delete the 250,000 tweets that I've accrued since 2007. And uh, now there's like, last time I looked, there's 1,076, which is a much lower than 250,000 or 246,000. And uh, why did it, why you should consider it, and all that good stuff. I'll talk to you soon. I don't know, but maybe a year ago, I had been doing all kinds of things to try to figure out how to monetize my YouTube. Um, And uh, I was doing stupid things, like I was taking podcasts and... Uh, using this cool RSS2 YouTube converter and making, basically posting all kinds of podcasts onto my account, and uh, and then I started doing it for my for this for this podcast. And apparently, no shit, um, I say some controversial stuff on this podcast. So when uh, I had st- I had been fighting. I've been fighting Google for the last f- five years, you know, getting uh, dinged and getting warnings and stuff and then waiting them out. And then just I just became bel- belligerent because I wanted to have enough views to be able to monetize and all this other stuff. It was YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. And I used to be monetized, but then they created a limit on it and I didn't. And then, like I said, I'm... Uh, a violent experimenter, and a year ago, uh, they torched my entire channel, youtube.com slash Chris Abraham, that I had since, you know, 2005, basically, and uh, I'm, I don't care, like, there's videos from my time in Berlin, from my time in Portland, from my time in Paris, like, loads of memories, and fuck, I don't care. Like, I don't go back and look at them. I've got all these videos of me riding my bike in Berlin to the Goethe Institute. And in the morning, you know, riding along the street and on bike lanes. And this video I took, which was sort of popular, of uh, Mexico City. And a video that was my most popular, which is basically the, uh, the shelf toilet um, in my apartment in Berlin. I had one of those old-fashioned shelfy toilets where you poop on it and you can look at your poop before you flush. And everything, every video in the entire world I've ever had um, that's not cross-posted onto Facebook um, is gone. Poof. And so, since I had been so belligerent over Ukraine, just going ahead and being willing to uh, take all kinds of chances because I thought that war was so stupid and so preventable. Um, I know that everything that I delete from Twitter isn't gone from the world. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not naive enough to think that if I delete it from 250,000 tweets for the last, what, 16 years? I don't know math or counting or subtraction. But uh, I have no way to enjoy any of it. It's all bullshit, right? And any kind of really controversial thing that I've said is, you know, in someone's back pocket, whether it's, you know, I don't know, a uh, Palantir or NSA or 
CIA or whatever, but all every single tweet I've ever tweeted in my entire life is gone now. I have an archive um, that I'm going to figure out how to make it searchable, but um, everything's gone. And uh, like I said, I'm not naive. Like the things that I've said can be used against me. Um, but anybody who's stupid will never be able to find them. Uh, so it'll just be a little bit harder, right? If you really want to get me, you totally can get me because like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything extreme. I'm just, I paid tweet deleter $10, I think, and downloaded the archive. They made me download because I had, you know, over 250, 246,000 tweets. So I downloaded the archive, which took 24 hours to get. And then I, they told me that if you had more than, what is it, three gigs of, of archives, that you need to unzip the archive, uh, go to data, copy all that stuff, and paste it into the upload box. And then it gave me the process of deleting everything. And then I set it up so that from now on, uh, every seven days... Um, my tweet will go poof. So, and I like that. I have uh, an instance on, uh, on uh, Abraham.su, Chris at Abraham, at Chris at Abraham.su. I have an instance uh, of Mastodon, and I have that set up so that every seven days my toots go poof. So, uh, it's fun, you know, like Facebook is the place where I've uploaded, you know, uh, photos since 2006. And, uh, so like if I want to find photos I've uploaded from my JROTC days or, uh, pictures of my mom or my dad or my childhood or any kind of group nostalgia, taggy McTag face, things that other people upload with me on it, that's the place I go. And I also go to my Flickr and I also go to my, uh, Google Photos so really just blitzing Twitter is a no-brainer because I've always said controversial things because I'm relatively anti-establishment and anti-authority and people really took freaking Ukraine seriously, man. Whereas a blind, deaf, dumb person could realize that Russia was going to invade Ukraine because Russia's been saying... That if you commit to NATO, or if you commit to the EU, and if you're not a neutral zone, a DMZ, if you're not uh, a, a safe place for ethnic Russians, if you're not for us, you're against us. And to show how much patience Putin and Russia had, they haven't done anything like sanction anybody over anything over the last 30, 40 years. We've been doing all the sanctioning, all the saber-rattling, all the aggression, all the fomenting regime change, all the um, uh, crushing of democracy, and all that other stuff in our endless growth across Europe, uh, doing it through subterfuge, and then saying that it's all democracy and what the people wanted. Yeah, every single country that chose the EU and NATO uh, was uh, opted in after all all conditions were made ripe by uh, State Department agitators. So on that note, I am going to pick up my breakfast and I will talk to you again in a few. Oh, things like what I'm saying now, totally why YouTube completely nuked my uh, channel. It really doesn't matter much, guys. I mean, even though I have... I don't know, how many do I have? Even though, theoretically, I have 42.4 thousand followers on Twitter, and I've been around since 2007, I am, and, and whenever you do a test on my followers, it is uh, only 2% spam uh, followers. In spite of all these things, and I guess every one of those 42.4 thousand people might have very well muted me or, or whatever... Um, they didn't block me, or they didn't unfollow me. So, I just assume that I have an extreme bozo filter on my account. I guess shadow banning, shadow blocking, 
the term that we used to use back in the day in the world of uh, message boards, forums, and online communities was Bozo Filter. And hopefully uh, when I run this through ChatGPT to write out the glossary, I want ChatGPT to define Bozo Filter as well as it possibly can. Because I think that uh, as a platform, I've been Bozo Filter. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm so happy to delete all of my content and then set it up so that every seven days my tweet goes poof is, you know, just to kind of make it less important, uh, make it less of, <clears throat> make it less important, get off my own high horse and really throw, I don't know what Twitter's going to say with the algorithm because, you know, over the course of one day, a quarter million records in the Twitter database just went poof and, um, Maybe they'll reconsider my account. Maybe if I am more selective and less uh, bombastic, less uh, less of a, quote, edgelord. And be sure, ChatGPT, to please create a glossary entry on what edgelord means, because not even I'm sure. But bombastic iconoclast, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> in spite of that, we'll see what happens, you know. And now I'm just going to behave like Chris Abraham on Mastodon instead of uh, on Twitter. And I can see when entire instances block me or block my domain. I can see when people block me. I can see the walls that are being built. Since I am the only user and also the super user of my instance, Abraham.su, the only user on there, I can see when people don't like my posts enough to... Uh, submit um, reports. And when they submit the reports about me, they submit the reports about me to me, and then I just ignore them. Uh, there is zero um, accountability, except that over time, I will be walled off from probably every glass jaw instance or um, every thin-skinned interest, or um, definitely I'm going to be blocked off from every homogenous instance, every instance that has to have a certain type of person, you know, um, and every instance that considers Macedon to be a safe space. Um, and, you know, honestly, it's a, it's a gift, right? If you know all you're going to do is be stepping on toes, it's better when people leave my own personal dance hall, right? So if everybody's got leftist feet, um, I am tired of caring about stepping on them, right? So by doing things like sharing RT, sharing Sputnik, sharing Epoch or Epoch News, sharing... Al Jazeera news, uh, writing. And I also like to, when I'm really can't sleep at three o'clock in the morning, I like going into what's called the Fediverse River, where everybody who hasn't put up a wall against me <clears throat> or who posts their, their toots in the public, into the public, um, I get to see them from around the world. And I just always take my liberty since they're public tweets. I always take my liberty to engage, but I'm not Pander McPanderface, which is why I guess I'm nuked from, oh, I can say this, you know, I was so envious of, uh, of Milan Kundera as a Czech man, Czech writer who self exiled to Paris. I always love when, um, an intellectual self exiles. Um, because self-exile sounds so much better than it is. What it is actually is just like moving away from your shitting shitty country. It's, it's emigrating all fricking, um, everybody emigrates from their country of Oregon, <laughs> their country of origin based on not liking it where they are or liking it better somewhere else whether it be economic or educational or where your friends are or where you can find a job. But the reason why Milan <clears throat> Kundera self-exiled is because he politically disagreed 
from the thought police that were the thought police sing that was happening in uh, his Czechoslovakia that under under the Soviet um, and behind the Soviet Iron Curtain. So what he did and what he called it was self-exile. So I was exiled from uh, I was totally exiled from um, from YouTube, but I'm self exiled from Starbucks. All right, they're about to start the leaf blowers, so I'm going to stop now, and I might come back to this to close out. Love you guys. So I don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, I don't know what I've been told. Apple wings are made of gold. C-130 roll down the strip. Anyway, I don't know. I would like to see if anything changes. Nothing changed for me under Elon. Like I didn't all of a sudden get unbozo filtered or whatever. Like I feel like I used to do a lot. I used to uh, do a lot of like market spam on Twitter. So maybe I got blackballed based on the fact that I was not adding value to the conversation. So who knows? After deleting a quarter million posts, <clears throat> I wonder if it's going to throw a flag anywhere. And uh, if anyone's going to notice or care, I don't care. I like having uh, my Twitter. I like having twitter.com slash Chris Abraham. And I like being able to share that I have Twitter on my, on my website and my blog posts and, and uh, everywhere else. And so I would prefer people who come to my Twitter not automatically think that I'm uh, the most polarizing fucker in the world and that so that they don't know how fucking stupid Ukraine was for even falling for this. I mean, listen, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, Ukrainians are dead. Ukrainians are dead. Um, tens of thousands of Russians are dead. I know they like to make it the other way around, but I'll be honest with you. Um, all the civilians in the war are Ukrainian, right? So the only people who die who are Russian are soldiers, no civilians. So ergo, um, <clears throat> any civilian casualties, unless they're from hypersonic missiles sent into Russia or whatever, cruise missiles, every single dead baby is going to be a Ukrainian dead baby. Every single dead mommy is going to be a Ukrainian dead mommy. Every single uh, uh, dead granny is going to be a Ukrainian dead granny, um, whether or not they're ethnically Russian. So um, every single developmentally challenged child is going to be a Ukrainian developmentally challenged child. <clears throat> every single innocent, every single um, uh, priest, rabbi, every single everybody who's not in uniform is going to be Ukrainian because Ukrainian war is happening in Ukraine. And Russian citizens are staying the F out. So, <clears throat> hate to say it, Russia has so little exposure. So little exposure. This is a uh, raise Ukrainians. This is a fish in a barrel killing of Ukrainian party. Um, so, that was a really stupid war to get into. And it's all America and uh, Great Britain's fault. I don't know why we did it. I don't know why we want to do it. But John McCain, God damn his soul to hell, uh, was always messing around 10 years ago, 15 years ago in Ukraine. <clears throat> Frickin' neocons, man. Neocons and neolibs are the same thing. So these are the things over the last... Since 2014, I've been saying on Twitter, and I just don't want those chickens to roost anymore. If someone wants to do some sort of, I don't know, deep dive, if someone wants to piece together uh, some sort of hit piece, I uh, the benefit of being bozo filtered for the last 10 years, in my opinion, is I am not worth raising a finger over. I mean... I have no power, I have no popularity, I have no engagement, I have no influence, 
I'm completely and perfectly contained. I am a firefly in a bottle. I might have a really, really glowy butt, but it's um, contained by glass and a lid. And I bet you they thought I'd be starved out by now and dead on the bottom of the of the bottle. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I recommend you guys do it if you want. The great thing about the tool Tweet Deleter is that it gives you a lot of like a lot of really cool scripts that you can follow. You know, delete certain ones, delete them in batches based on keywords, based on frequency, based on age, all kinds of really cool stuff. So you should totally check that out. And uh, I think, uh, I don't have a lot more to say about it. I, I think that all the terrible things I've ever said uh, is on my Tumblr, which is chris-abraham.com. Because whenever I get a real good zinger, I post it there. Chris-Abraham.com is where my Tumblr is. And the good thing is that Tumblr is so full of porn that any content you throw in it to Tumblr, uh, Google search doesn't care a thing about it. It doesn't give any shits. Um, so, anyway. On that note, uh, I haven't done any editing on Facebook I am what I am, but I'm a little bit more careful there. Uh, whenever I want to be a real asshole, I go into uh, Facebook Messenger and uh, share with a group that I have full of uh, tinfoil hat people. I think it's called Tinfoil or something. Uh, fun group, fun little chat group. And of course, there's my buddy Kay. He and I are monsters, and my buddy Mark... Uh, He's not a monster, but whenever he gets around me, apparently I'm the baddie. Fuck, my entire life, I didn't know that I was a monster. Turns out that everybody else knew, and I thought Mark was the monster, but it turns out everybody around Mark thinks that he is God's gift to sweetness, kindness, and love. Whereas apparently all my friends are pretty sure that at some point in my life I've taken a life. Literally, my friends wouldn't be surprised if I had killed somebody, which, as far as I'm concerned, is, is fucking cool. But if I were to be circumspect and think about it a little bit further, um, I like to reframe it as I would uh, kill for them or kill to protect them or kill to protect them on behalf of their life and happiness and safety. But I don't know if that's what they mean. So on that note, this is the end, my friend. This is the end. Oh, and I'm approaching Ididos. Oops. Damn it. I completely forgot that I ordered a coffee at Starbucks. I'm going to completely walk all the way back there because it's sitting there for me. And I completely forgot that I did this a long time ago. And, uh... So that's where I'm going to get my coffee instead of at Ididos, which is my favorite place. Um, also, I think maybe Instagram's a little dodgy in terms of my content. But like I said, like you need to have visual content on uh, Instagram. So generally when I just have a brain fart that I need to share, I share it on, uh, <clears throat> I share it on Mastodon, Twitter, and uh, maybe Facebook, and sometimes Tumblr. So, I don't know. I don't know what I've been told. Airborne wings are made of gold. <clears throat> so anyway, we'll see. It'll be really interesting as I uh, make a real deep cut to Twitter, what uh, outcome there is in terms of whether or not uh, my reputation is healed, whether or not my <clears throat> engagement is restored, whether or not I throw a red flag and someone looks at my account and sees that it's all messed up 10 years ago and I'm restored to greatness, or if for whatever reason I threw a term of service by deleting a quarter million tweets and now I'm in trouble, uh, we'll only know uh, over time. So what is, oh, so the rest of my day, is gonna be working, and then it's gonna rain at around three. So I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna continue cleaning my apartment. And then tomorrow morning, oh, and I had a big breakfast. I had uh, 
um, sausage, bacon, and ham omelet with home fries and cheddar. And so that's my one meal a day. And I did that yesterday too, but I ate more in the afternoon. So I'm probably in a very unhealthy body state at the moment. On that note, um, Zoe's tomorrow. My goal today is to make that my it's like 12, 1300 calories, I think, to make that my one meal until, until tomorrow after park run when I will eat uh, after, the, after the run is over. All I'm going to do in the morning is I'm going to drink uh, maybe two scoops of, of um, chocolate protein powder with uh, creatine in it and a bunch of coffee. And I'll make that my breakfast. And then I will have a real breakfast at 10.30. Oh, como dia, como dia. 10.30 or 11 o'clock uh, on Saturday morning after after park run and when we go to the coffee hour after. I don't mind if my espresso is cold, but I know if someone else took it or they threw it away, I know they'll make me another one, which me happy if they'll do that for me. Ooh. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. You guys have a good morning. Bye-bye. Hey, this is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 8 again. I was just thinking about the number one reason why raising and nuking my entire Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham 250,000 tweets is who knows what kind of crazy shit I said during COVID. Also, who knows about the crazy things I said during Trump's presidency? Who knows the crazy things I said during January 6th? Um, obviously, the crazy things I've said about um, Ukraine war. And who knows the crazy things I said about uh, the election between Trump and Biden. And who knows the kind of things I said you know, while I felt safe in Berlin or whatever. Like, there's just so much. And this goes all the way back to working at Edelman. Well, just after Edelman, it goes through all of Abraham Harrison. It goes through all of Garris Corp. It goes through everything. It's all gone. Who knows? I have this thing called aphantasia, and I've got this thing called SDAM, which means, like, I really do not hold these memories in my head. And by purging them, I really let them go. And so they don't exist anymore. Um, and that makes me happy. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll take the archive and I found some instructions on how to turn the Twitter archive into a searchable database. But who knows? May or may not do that. Um, I uploaded the uh, archive to three of my uh, cloud services. So... NSA and CIA, if you want to go delete those, you're welcome to do so. And, like I said, I know that everything on the internet is is forever, but I am so low cast and I am so low, uh, what is the term for it, prestige, that there's no reason, aside from future employers, to really do that much of a care about what I have or and haven't said. And honestly, if all of a sudden, you know, in a couple of years, I'm a big muckety muck, it'll just be a, enough of a pain in the ass to find all those old tweets that, you know, you're going to have to throw some good money at it. And, um, and, you know, the good news is that there's no direct, you know, there's no screenshots and there's no direct link to tweets or any other convenient thing that would be easy to share by doing a little bit of searching on Twitter. So if you guys want to do it too, like I said, www.tweetdeleter.com. Not tweet delete. I chose tweet deleter. The, uh, the icon is a little nuclear bomb or a new kind of the bomb, World War II bomb that they dropped from, uh, from airplanes. So that was the right one for me. It's pretty affordable and it works. Personal, uh, Personally attesting to it. All right, finally, uh, got my espresso. I uh, visited the loo in the worst way possible. And because I don't have aphantasia, sorry I did that to you. Nobody ever wants to have that idea in their head. And now I will drink my coffee. 
I will go to maybe Ideos for real, maybe just to the library, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. The Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 8. Um, au revoir. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.